If you're an artist or a creator of any kind and you want to improve quickly on your craft, then you're gonna wanna get really good at giving and getting feedback. Today, we're gonna go over some practical tools for giving and getting feedback on your artwork. First, we're gonna start with giving feedback to others. For giving feedback, I'm gonna have five practical tools for giving feedback, and then after that, five practical tools for getting feedback. The first tool for giving feedback is being proactive. The act of giving feedback is a proactive act. And if you really want some help from others, really the best place to start is to give feedback to them. You know, help yourself by helping others. And actually, you're going to be helping yourself anyways. Because when you give other artists feedback, you learn about their work. You learn about how they work. You learn about the materials they use and everything. Thereby, you really broaden your own scope and knowledge of art in itself. And you can use that for your own artwork just by giving feedback. Also, you begin developing a language around art, which is really important because sometimes it's hard to talk about art. So you develop this language by giving feedback and through that, you gain confidence to express your own opinion because when you can talk well about a subject, you'll gain confidence. Now let's move on to practical tool number two for giving feedback, and that is balance. Great feedback has good balance. A balance between the positive and the negative. I like to think of it like a critique sandwich. You know, think of the bread being the positive and the filling being the negative. So you do positive, negative, positive. And I go back and forth between that a couple times, but I always want to end on something positive when giving feedback. We want the feedback that we give to be balanced because too much negative feedback to a person is gonna put them in a defensive mode, right? They're gonna say, wow, I don't like you anymore, right? <laughs> But on the other end, too much positive feedback just leads to reassurance. And just reassuring somebody is, is good for motivation, but it really doesn't help with your or their skill level. So be careful of too much negative and too much positive feedback. Have a balance in between each one and use that critique sandwich. Let's go on to tool number three for giving feedback, and that is in-person feedback. In-person feedback really opens up the ability for the conversation of questions and answers to go back and forth really quickly. In this situation, you can ask a lot of questions of the person that you're giving feedback to. You can ask questions such as, what do you love about the artwork or the piece you're working on? Uh, what do you want to improve about it? Where did you struggle most when you were creating it? Because Art is always a struggle, right? But with this, you can meet them where they are. Through these questions, you figure out where their skill level is, and then you can give them feedback that doesn't overwhelm them. If you're well beyond their skill level and you start giving them feedback beyond something that they could even achieve, the feedback's not gonna be helpful. So use the questions so you can meet them where they are and give feedback that is targeted to what exactly they need. So let's go on to practical tool number four for giving feedback, and that is online. It's the opposite of in-person. For online scenarios, which a lot of us deal with, it's really hard to ask questions and get quick responses so that you can target your feedback to the person. Instead of asking a bunch of questions, you're gonna have to do a bit of investigation. Now, it really helps if you're part of the same course as them, maybe in the same class, or maybe you're both part of the same forum that has a particular theme. By knowing these things, you can really tailor uh, your responses to be more on target for exactly what they need. Also, try to remember that when you're giving online feedback, these aren't faceless names, okay? They're real people with real feelings and real aspirations, just like yourself. It's important that you take it seriously. The words that you give to others can really change their lives. But the great way on online feedback to instill some empathy in the conversation is to envision that these people are right in front of you. Actually put a face to the name. Put yourself in their shoes and direct your feedback so the purpose is to motivate the artist and keep them moving forward. 
So this brings us to tip or tool number five for giving feedback, and that is feedback can be really uncomfortable. The only answer I have for this is honestly, you gotta practice. And over time, like I said, you're gonna build that language, you're gonna build the confidence. But the one thing you can do at the beginning is focus on objective data points. An example of that is, instead of saying your perspective is all wrong, you could say, when I compare your reference image with your drawing, the vanishing points don't match up. They are misaligned. That's very objective piece of feedback. Also within this feedback, you don't wanna use aggressive language like you shouldn't or you didn't. Instead, you might wanna use I feel or I think. Here's an example. I feel that the overuse of black in this painting is really dampening the, the overall brightness that it could have. This really softens the negative feedback that you give and it provides some really specific details that they can improve upon. So by using I feel or I think, you're explaining how their artwork has affected you. And when you do this, it gives them even more purpose and meaning for their work. Now let's move on to the five tools for getting feedback. And tool number one for getting feedback is path to improvement. Why is it called path to improvement? Well, the only way that you can improve on any craft is by getting feedback. Plus, with a good feedback structure, the feedback can help you improve faster. It's like lean manufacturing, which is a manufacturing technique that's based on a fast feedback loop, a very fast feedback loop. And it looks like this. You build something, you test it, you improve on the next iteration. Like you paint something, you get feedback, you improve on the next one. And the tighter you can make that feedback loop, the more effective and the faster you can improve. This is why it's super important to get feedback as often as possible, e even if the feedback hurts. I'm sorry, sometimes it's gonna hurt. So this brings us to a getting feedback tool number two, which is, so where do you get feedback? That's a good question. I mean, where are you gonna get feedback? There's a lot of places, but I'm gonna focus on a few. Because getting feedback has stages, and the first stage begins with yourself, and it radiates out from there. So let's go through each stage in turn. So it begins with yourself with a self-critique. And the best way to critique yourself is with a structured approach, just like everything else we talked about previously. And this is kind of like the critique sandwich, but with very specific language. Now here's what I use, and you can adjust it however you like, but I really like these three questions. What went well? What needs work? and how can I improve? It's super simple. So I try and ask these questions after every single painting session. And because I do artwork every single day, I basically ask these questions every single day. I ask, what did I do well today during the session? What needs work? And then what am I going to do in the next se session to actually act upon that personal feedback? Okay, that's your self feedback and now let's radiate out from there to the next stage, which is with a teacher or mentor. Now this is the most ideal situation for, for getting feedback. Not only are you, an, are you an in person with the teacher or mentor, but this is a person that has the magic. They have the skills that you want to acquire. And so they're a little bit ahead of you. So receiving their feedback is golden. Having a teacher is extremely valuable. All right, the next stage, we go out from a teacher and we're gonna get feedback from friends and colleagues. And at this point, we're gonna need some tools on how to ask for feedback because that's just as important as getting feedback. First, ask a few questions of yourself. Here's some for you. What do I love about the work or what do I hate about it? Where do I want to improve on this work? Where did I struggle most when creating it? So this way, if you ask these questions before you ask a friend or colleague, you have the clarity and you know how you want to direct their feedback and that would help you even more. The same advice applies to asking for feedback online. For online, uh, we're gonna have to add a few more considerations on top of this. We're still radiating out from ourselves. We went from self-critique teacher, mentor, friend and colleague. Now, 
online. And I think many of us are getting feedback online these days. But as is the nature of the internet, you're gonna have much less familiarity with the people that you interact with online than with anywhere else. Here's some steps you can take to close the gap between you and them. If you're taking an online course again, it's best to ask your peers in that course or in that class or whatever. This way you get more targeted feedback. The other places are forums. So if you're part of a forum, usually forums have some kind of centered theme, but you wanna ask for feedback in a forum that is directed for the artwork that you actually create. If you want technical advice on drawing, then put it on a forum that's tailored for technical advice on drawing, like proco.com, which is wonderful for technical advice on drawing. But the basic idea here is that you're trying to establish a commonality between your work and the people that you're asking. But what if, what if you're not part of any forum or online course or anything? And I'm gonna call this the wild west of feedback, also known as social media. And here you're at the mercy of anyone that finds your art interesting enough to stop scrolling and pause and actually write something to you. Most of the time in this situation, just getting the feedback is the feedback. That's an accomplishment in itself. They actually stop to look at your piece. It must be interesting in some way. But my suggestion here to get more direct feedback is to ask uh, one or two really short questions that have really easy answers. You also need to be prepared for trolls and people that just want to be jerks. Which leads us into my next point. Tool number three for getting feedback, the pain of getting feedback. So at the beginning, all artists are fragile. I was, and I think every artist is. Just understand that it's universal. We're all gonna have very fragile feelings at the beginning. The only thing I'm gonna say here is just have patience, okay? And keep trying to get feedback. Because remember, most of the negative feedback, these are indicators for possible improvement. Which brings us to tool number four, which is how to receive feedback. It's just as important as asking for feedback. The first point here, and maybe the most obvious, is listen and read. If someone is giving you feedback, then take the time to listen to what they're telling you, respect them, and give them the time that they need. Basically, just take the time and pay attention to what they're saying or writing. And always, always, always be thankful for any of the feedback that you get. I mean, if you don't know what to say, then just say thank you. Always fall back on thank you. If you completely hate what they say or whatever they're talking about is completely off topic, say thank you. Part of receiving feedback is the ability to judge the feedback that you're getting. This brings us to the last and final tool, tool number five for getting feedback, and that is judging the feedback that you get. So feedback can be very subjective. And honestly, most of the time it is very subjective. But when it is subjective, then it's up to you to determine if the feedback you're receiving is really worth internalizing. And figuring out whether you should take it or leave it starts with gaining some kind of understanding of the person giving the feedback to you. So you can ask something like, do they know nothing about art? Or do they know a lot about art? Are they partial, such as a family member who really doesn't wanna hurt your feelings and they're gonna give you more reassurance than negativity. That's really great to understand. But through this understanding of who the person is, you can save yourself a lot of time and headache and heartache. Because if you start internalizing everything that you get, it could lead you way off topic or you could end up just stop doing your craft altogether. And we don't want that. Okay, that's it. 10 tools for giving and getting feedback. I gave you five. For giving feedback, I gave you five for getting feedback. 10 tools total, awesome. Now, if that was very helpful, which I hope it is, my purpose here is to further you as an artist in some way, to keep you moving forward, to keep you motivated. If it was, let me know by hitting that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if I've missed anything at all, please let me know. Put a comment below, I will definitely respond to you. I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you next time.